Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about React Query. So in this video, we will be talking about what React Query is, why you should use it. And we're also going to talk like how you should use it from like an architectural point of view. Uh, and we are going to install it as well. So you can get started with it in the next videos. Um, React Query is simply a library focused on making data fetching simple and efficient. Now, of course, simple is subjective, but I do feel that it is a pretty easy tool to understand for, uh, for developers, especially if you know how to work with React. React Query won't be a problem at all. Um, it also has some built-in tools to save bandwidth. So, uh, you could definitely say that it is efficient as well, but I think the you know biggest selling point of React Query is the building caching mechanism, and that is absolutely great um, for the user experience. You know your app will be much faster and more responsive for your users. And to give you a demonstration of this, um, this is a very simple app which was built by the creator of React Query. His name is Tanner Lindsley, uh, absolutely great guy, very smart. And um, yeah, what I recommend you to do is follow him on Twitter. I will link his uh, profile in the description, uh, give him a follow because he's posting and creating awesome stuff for the React community every now and then. So, um, so yeah, definitely do that. But he also made this um, app that really shows you what is the difference between an app built without React Query and how it is when you build it with React Query and have the caching like in place. Um, so here you have like sidebar, when I click on blog, you'll see loading state. Here we got some articles. I can click on a, one of them loading. But now when I go back to blog, it's going to fetch that data again. And if you, for example, do your data fetching in a use effect hook, this will be the result of, you know, doing that. And I do not recommend you to, to start implementing caching yourself. That's a really difficult thing to do. Uh, but you can see that it, you know, once I'm navigating, I constantly have these loading states and you might not see it as a problem, but now let's switch to the application that has react query in place. And when I click on blog, it fetches. But now when I click on a blog post, it's immediately there. And if you notice, there is like this loading spinner on top. And for example, React Query also comes with a lot of great tools. Like when you hover over a button, it already starts, for example, prefetching the post. So see, like if I now hover over this, you see it was fetching that post. Now when I click it, it's immediately there. But also notice when I go back to the blog, everything is still there, right? And you see that if you check the right upper corner, you see that loading spinner is still there. Um, but it's essentially using the cache, then making a new fetch. And then if it updates, then it will update these blog posts as well. But you see that it gives an amazing user experience. You know, the app feels super fast. I don't have like all these loading states anymore. Of course, if I go to like a completely new page, it would have to do the loading, but it's just so much nicer to use. And this is, you know, you don't have to configure anything for the caching to work. This is something that comes out of the box with React Query. So I think that's definitely its main selling point. Having that said, React Query is also very customizable. Right. In data fetching, you often have cases where you need to do like um, query retries or paginated queries or prefetching, like we saw with the with the on hover um, on that post and that it was already prefetching the data. Uh, there's things like optimistic updates, which we will cover in um, in, in the upcoming videos. And this is all, you know, React Query has a lot of built-in tools to make this easy for you. So you don't have to like reinvent the wheel. There's been guys that have been thinking about this and implementing this in the library. So that makes it an extremely powerful tool to use. 
Now let's head over to the architecture and speaking about architecture, I do have a video in the advanced section of this course um, where we will be talking about uh, app architecture in React, but um, this is just more focused on the architecture of your app um, with regard to React Query. So let's say we have an app component, we have a dashboard component, which is for example in the in the pages folder, then the dashboard components render um, three other components, uh, a user's component, a user component, and a create user component. Um, and what's essentially happening, let's say users is just a list of all the users uh, we have in our app. User is like a user detail overview and create user is simply a form to create a new user. So with React Query, you would then probably have a folder called hooks or, or query hooks. And in there, you will have um, essentially functions uh, in files, in separate files. And it's pretty conventional to call it like use user, use create user. So for all your CRUD updates, you will give it a relevant name. Um, so for creating a user, you can see it is like use create user. Uh, if you want to get just one user, you will use use user and so on. Um, so that's what we're going to start with in the next video. But before that, um, you need to install React Query and you can simply do so by um, going to your code editor and you can just say, when you have your React app, of course, open, you can say npm install um, React query. So I'd like to ask you to do that. And then we will see each other in the next video where we are going to actually fetch data with React Query.